good going good going good i feel like it's hitting different what is i feel like this new year is hitting different than previous new years well we kind of set the new year up that way though we decide we decided to do like a ketone assisted fast at the first of the year so like we kind of blasted our asses into ketosis like the deep level of ketosis i don't feel like you are most of the time in a deep level of ketosis and we forgot to test this morning Uh, we did forget to test i'm i'm pretty deep right now yeah it's been a while since I have consistently been in deep ketosis. Normally yeah. I'm just pretty loosey goosey about about carbs. And and in the reality I probably was eating up to like fifty net carbs a day. Yeah. Just wasn't I was I was relying on Oh, this is keto, this yeah, is keto, this is keto. keto, you know. But. And that's a slippery slope. So if anyone's listening and you're like, Oh, I just eat keto, that's why I'm a big well, what I teach my clients is to make a plan every single day because I that my first round of keto, definitely that was my theme if it's keto i can eat it so yeah. like when i'd get hungry and i wasn't managing that i just here's some almonds here's some cheese turkey roll-ups here's some leftovers and it was just eating whatever i wanted so the weight loss was a lot slower um but you're having a good time having a great time i'm trying to figure out so full transparency your boy gained some weight since the beginning of november Okay. I put on since then. I probably put on about fifteen pounds. I I have a question because yeah. I don't know this. When was the last time that you weighed yourself? Prior to me weighing myself now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Can tell you. Okay, <laughs> so that's that's funny to me. That's interesting. Yeah. Because you just didn't know, really. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. I could uh, I, after a while. I did get to a point where I could I could see it. Okay. Like in my waistline a little bit nothing crazy like not not back to where i was yeah you know but um i could tell i had i had uh, regressed a little bit so yeah um so now you're deep in ketosis you don't realize how good of a mood you are i do in <laughs> I do. well no you may know now but in the past i would tell him i would be like just so you know like you're more I, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but the patience that comes with keto, listen, I'm a mom of, of two small children and a puppy, and I'm not saying I never yell or <laughs> lose my shit, but when I am in deep ketosis, it is different. It is so different. Your your mood is just different. And I've told Ryan that before. I'm like, you may not be aware of this, but you are different when you're in deep ketosis. And he'd always argue with me and be like, no, I'm not. I'm not like you. I'm fine. It doesn't matter. I don't have to be strict. But now that he's been, like I said, following that fast, like... What was the highest? Oh, during the fast, you registered like 2.1 blood yeah. ketones. Mm-hmm. And now he's been cons- consistently 1.3, somewhere in the ones, which is high for him. And just overall, the mood is just so different. I'm, I'm, I'm generally a pretty moody person, I would say. And, it, and towards the end of the year with like some work stuff going on, it got pretty bad to the point where one day I was like, and I think I said this before, but the, this is, I got to fix this. Is this a sleep problem? What is it? Yeah. And I started going to bed earlier and it was, it got to the, it got to just a breaking point where I was like, I got to figure this out. Cause I don't like having days like this. Yeah. But ever since I've been in deep ketosis, it's like, you do, you just don't have to manage that stuff. I feel like a lot happier. <laughs> and it's fine. That's kind of like with what I teach, you get to choose what you want to like work on. Like you get to choose what you want to coach yourself on, get coached on, do work on. But for some things, it's like, if you can take that off the table where you don't have to put all this energy into managing your mood, because you can just follow a diet that manages your mood mostly for you. Like, why wouldn't you do that? Because if that's covered by being keto and you know, we've been eating a lot more whole foods, a lot more fat, honestly, just a lot less carbs, period. Ryan hasn't been having any keto replacements none of the bread none of the buns none of that stuff i'm so locked in dude (laughs) i'm unstoppable i love it i love it that's my favorite you i I love it when you're just like cruising i've lost five pounds in six days yes and every time and basically i'm doing omad with the exception of like ketones and an espresso in the morning 
and in the afternoon sometimes. Well, you know, I, I drink fluids here and there and yeah. some have 40 calories. Yeah, and they you help know, you overall. I probably have 200 calories outside of my one meal. Yeah. Did you have a second meal last night? No. We had steak and shrimp last night. Oh, that's all I ate. And it was probably, you know, it was 12, little, 13, yeah. 1400 calories. And then you have the calories from the but Normally, I would add, uh, two, three hours later, I would have like a, a keto treat or whatever. But or no. three. I just sip my zero uh, sugar drink yeah. until I go to bed. But- the more important question is, have you been suffering? No. 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 Well, I, you've heard me say it multiple times, but the thing I keep telling myself, and it's like my mantra is like, food does not control me. Yeah. So that's something you're working. And that's awesome because that's something that you're working to believe. Yeah. Every time <laughs> every time I'm like, I have having an, an urge, urge yeah. I, I say food does not <laughs> control me <laughs> or i'll be like hey are you hungry he's like yeah i could eat but food does not control me like i've heard him say that at least 50 times i mean he's being a really good example of how to find evidence for new things because as he sticks to what he committed to it does get easier it's just like it you're does. practicing something new and you know what when you eat those keto treats it's like this oversatiating is that the word hyper palatable hyper palatable you're at the mercy of those things yeah and they they cause more of that you want to you want to ask yourself if what you're eating the snacks the treats are they helping you or are you harming are they harming you because on one hand you're like i get to feel normal normal i get to snack i get crunch and i want that yeah. but then on the other hand is it causing an over desire to keep eating an over desire to keep snacking an over desire to like i want three now because then like i talked about at the beginning of the episode you have to do that management whereas you don't have to manage that if you don't start the process i also mm -hmm. have significantly reduced my i mean i think yesterday was the first time i had some almonds that mix that has the <laughs> almond and the cheese in like five or six days and i haven't been having keto treats i'm just going i I asked Ryan the other day, and his answer is different than mine, but I said, were we always eating sweet stuff at the end of the night? And he said yes for him, but that was not me. I was not someone who was like eating, like I'd have, I'd, I'd end my days with something sweet. I, that wasn't me. This was me. my belief prior to this new year. Okay. <clears throat> I need, like, I, I would panic if we ran out of keto cake you treats. Would. Because that was my pillar to success. Yeah. Was allowing myself the caloric, you know, enough yeah, calories, calories at the end of the day it. for a sweet treat at the end of the day at 9.30 p.m. Or multiple, though. It wasn't just... It was sometimes always you were multiple. saving 600 multiple. when you were tracking. It was yeah. like saving over 600 calories for these treats. Yes. And I'm here to tell you that <laughs> if you want to cut that shit out and stop snacking completely it's very difficult at first but it does get easier yes it gets a lot easier very quickly you just have to kind of i don't want to say white knuckle but oh you have to allow yourself to want it it's okay to want something yeah. it's even okay to want something very 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 badly it's yeah. very, it's totally okay for your brain to be, i had this yesterday with an urge it's okay for your brain to be like we will die if you don't eat this it's okay and necessary to allow that to be there you have to understand that your brain has these built-in neural pathways that are so well um, established and so ryan's belief and and re-establishment of this pattern that says every night i have two treats 600 calories something sweet it's the pillar to my success mm -hmm. it's it's necessary for me to be successful. He had all the evidence and then also the reinforcement of that, doing it over and over again. So what, what happens in the beginning is when you decide not to do that, your brain is like, what is this? This isn't what we normally do. And your brain wants to keep you safe. It wants to keep you doing what you've done, especially if it brings you pleasure, if it releases dopamine. So yes, there is initially, as you're trying to um, undo habits and patterns that you have it's not going to feel amazing but if you can <laughs> stick it out and just allow it to be there it does move through and then as the days go on it does get easier i think that we talk a lot about tools and um sweet treats sweet keto treats snacks replacements are all kind of tools to get you where you want to go but there does sometimes you do get to a point where it's not a helpful tool for your toolkit yeah. Your, your toolkit should be changing. It shouldn't remain the same your entire journey. It changes. And in the beginning, when you're switching from a standard American diet and you're eating just tons of crap and eating fast food four times a day like I did and starting your day off with a 32-ounce cherry Coke, um, it's really nice to have 
tortillas and bread and snacks and chips that are ketofied. And that will work for a while until it doesn't. Yep. And that's, so you have to kind of be constantly evaluating and knowing this is a tool. Is it helpful or is it hurting me? And I don't see a problem with limiting the keto treats to Friday nights. <laughs> you know, like yeah. what, why do I need one every day? And to be honest, for a long time, I continued to lose weight. No problem. So did I. And that's what was, that's the thing about it is, is I was doing that and it was still working. Yeah. So it's just a reevaluation and um, we're just kind of tightening things up. But like I've said for a long time, like the beginning of the new year is different energy. In my opinion, everything is easier. So when it comes to like buckling down and I don't say that in a restrictive way, I literally mean in a like, okay, if we can tighten things up, and I want to do that. Now's the time to do it. So we, what, what are the things we've been doing? We're really, really trying to not eat in between meals. Yeah. Me specifically. Yeah. I, and yesterday, I promise you, I felt like I was going to die. <laughs> I needed to do something for work. And it was something that I had never done before. And I knew it was, in, it was pending. It was on my to-do list. I kept making up excuses. I didn't want to do it. I stressed myself out for probably three hours. And then during that time coincidentally right you would have thought if i wasn't aware of my brain i would have thought i'm just starving today today is a starving day no i was stressed out i did not want to do what i needed to do and by the way what i chose to do this was like no one's making me do this it's something i want to do but i've never done it so there was a lot of like i'm wondering what the feeling was Oh, I just, it was like when we recorded the first podcast, it was just, and it shouldn't have been, but it doesn't matter because I honor the feelings that come up. And that feeling was just like, so resistant. I did not want, I was so, I was feeling that resistance to, I want to do this. It's valuable to do this, but I don't know how to do this. I've never done this before. So I kind of battled with myself literally for the entire workday yesterday until I just did it. But during that time, coincidentally, I was starving starving i anything sounded good i have some pickles in my fridge i just wanted to eat and i allowed that to be there and i was just like this isn't hunger at all this is um this is an emotional issue we're dealing with right now this is an um, this is the resistance that i'm feeling i want to dampen this feeling i want to bring it down with food and so it's just such a good awareness when it comes to urges that like I've been at this for a long time and I still get hit with urges that make me feel like if I don't eat, like I'm going to collapse. Yeah, it's it's definitely a muscle that you flex and yeah. it gets stronger over time is allowing urges. Yeah. It's something you want to get good at. It's, it's really yeah, hard valuable. at first and then it gets easier and it gets easier and it gets easier. And if you can get good at doing that, yeah. you are going to be successful. Yeah. You are going to lose weight. Yeah. If you can get good at allowing urges. And I want to remind you that it's the resistance that amplifies it. And so when I was having these thoughts that are like, but it's not time to eat. You said you weren't going to eat outside of your two meals. It is 1030. What do you talk? Like when I was thinking those thoughts, just it was like gasoline on the fire. That's when the resistance just. Mm. So that's when people have questions about like whether I'm allowing the urge to be there and letting it move through me. Yeah. question always comes up. It's when you're resisting an urge. Basically, I want you to think of resisting an urge as you're arguing with it. You don't want it to be there. You're pushing it away. Literally resistance. It's you against the urge and you're pushing against it. You're like, it is 1030. You're never going to hit your goals if you're eating at 1030. You know, for me, because if I ate at 1030, then I'd also eat at 1230 and then I'd also eat at four and then I'd also eat at six and then I'd have a treat. You know, so I for me, I, I don't like to start eating early and I'm not hungry at 1030. Um, so I just wanted to share that personal experience on multiple counts, which is like, it's okay if you have resistance to things <laughs> that you've never done before, yeah. but tell yourself to the truth in that scenario. It had nothing to do with hunger. It had everything to do with, I want to solve this emotion with food. Food will help me not feel this. I was even telling myself these lies like, but if I eat, it'll bring the feeling down and then I can do it. Mm. Then I can, that's what I need. I need a snack if I'm going to accomplish this task. It's wild. It's wild that we tell ourselves those things. But I promise you, the difference is whether you know that's happening or not. Most people don't know that. I promise you, most of my clients would say, I'm having a starving day today. (laughs) It's just one of those days that I'm starving at a time I never, ever eat 
Yeah. And that's when you need to you need to check in with yourself and be like, is this head hunger or is this stomach hunger? Is this emotional hunger or is this physical hunger? You have to be able to differentiate between those hungers and then keep keep the steps going, which is when I realized, okay, this isn't actual physical hunger. This is an emotion. Looking back, I wish I would have just done the thing (laughs) because at some point I had to do it. And at some point I did do it. And I wish I had done it at nine instead of noon. And then I wouldn't have had to be battling with myself about the food. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned a lot. And what it takes in those moments is consciousness and presence and being with what is. And with what is, I was dealing with uncomfortable emotions, hunger due to that, and I had to manage my brain. And then I told Ryan, like, I was like, I just allowed an urge that was like a doozy (laughs) because it was so emotionally related. Like, it wasn't boredom related. I truly believe that it was a stronger urge than what I'm used to with like a get a snack from the pantry. Like, that urge, maybe we need to start like labeling the level of urge because this was an urge that I would compare to Oceanside and the snack mix. We talked about it, I think on our keto vacation uh, podcast where I was like, it was an unopened perfect box of cheese at snack mix. And I was just like keto. And I was just like, I will die if I don't take this upstairs and watch (laughs) bachelor, I will die. And it's so drama, but those are the situations where most people don't know what to do when that happens and so they end up eating and so yeah. it's it's a combination of so many of those combined that keeps you overweight because you don't know what to do in those scenarios so what, do, what do you do um well i just kind of uh lean in i think a lot of people push back or duck out yeah. <laughs> so i lean in and i get very conscious of like where it is in my body what it what what thoughts are amplifying it sitting with it which most people when it comes to emotions and urges they're like no if i lean into it it's going to get bigger and i'll never be able to escape it that applies to urges and like really really strong emotions that feel like a lot in your body most people buffer they like eat or they shop or they drink or they yeah so they do that or but what i do is i lean into it i tune into it i find out where it is in my body i get honest with myself about where it's coming from because it's coming from me i'm creating it and i'm create you it has nothing to do with creating the hunger i'm creating the resistance the feeling of resistance so i'm creating a feeling of resistance because i'm thinking that i don't want to do this I don't want to do this task, which is making me feel resistant, which is my body is saying food will help. Mm. I could have left. I could have ran an errand. I could have gone and seen my baby. I could I could have done, I could have taken all kinds of actions. And that's what we discussed with the root cause versus the symptom. Me eating to solve that problem wasn't the problem. The problem was my resistance to the task. So... How do you just remove all the stress in your life then? You don't. You you learn that stress and those emotions are part of life. And so what you want to know how to do is to manage them. And that is what I teach my clients. That's what Vibe Club takes deeper. But for those listening on the podcast, it's being willing to lean in. It's being willing. It's not overly complicated. It's just knowing that when you resist it, it grows. And that the way to move through an urge is to lean into it and to tell yourself the truth and to get honest about what's going on and just to know that no feeling or urge can ever hurt you or be harmful to you. So even though it was so uncomfortable and I wouldn't choose to feel that feeling on purpose, I wasn't going to argue with its existence and argue with the reality that it was there. But I won't lie that it brought me a lot of comfort to be like, I'm not hungry. This isn't a food problem. And more importantly, this isn't a problem that I can solve with food. The only way to solve this problem is by doing that thing that I wanted to do that I'm feeling resistant to. Because guess how good I felt when it was over? (laughs) So good. I text Ryan. I was like, I did it. I'm no longer a virgin at this. You know, like I'd never done it before. It was like a a video recording, but Uh, it was a different, it was a tool I'd never used. But when we've never done something before, it just feels dangerous it feels like very very uncomfortable and so anyways I learned a lot from that so it's like we can use our urges against ourselves and like beat ourselves up and resist them and wish they weren't there and do all of that stuff or we can be like like I maximized that experience yesterday I learned a lot I was I I created a lot for myself because I did move through it I I didn't have to do that task and in the past I would not have I would have moved it to tomorrow and then I would have moved it to next week and then I would have said it wasn't necessary. I would have said they don't even need it anymore. 
<laughs> that was what I used to do. And so the only way out is through. Okay. That's what I want to say. The mm. only way out of the urge is moving through it. You will not get stuck there. You're not going to like quick sound it, sand and all of a sudden it's going to start sucking you down. That's not what's going to happen. When you move into it, when you get familiar with feelings and urges and emotions and you're willing to feel anything on purpose, you're unstoppable. I have a good visual okay. for this. And it's kind of like a, a analogy uh, visual. Mm-hmm. Close your eyes. Imagine you're at the beach. It's a guided meditation. Yes. Close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> take two calming breaths <laughs> okay go <laughs> okay you're at the beach you're at a beach where there's huge waves and there's surfers imagine a surfer z- zipping up getting his surfboard running into the water to paddle out through the waves mm-hmm. he's not running away from the waves he's going through them mm-hmm. and they're huge waves mm-hmm. and his goal is to get to the other side where there's no huge waves crashing on top of him yes and then he can just sit on his board Yes. Is that good? And when we resist it, we're staying. Did you ever go to that beach, Aliso Creek Beach in California? No. My mom would take us there. We almost died. We almost died <laughs> all the time. <laughs> okay. There's big shore the break. The shore break is like six feet. You were going to die if you did not figure out how to get through it. So that's what it brought to my head. It's like you but that's staying true. at the shore. Yeah. And you're just getting crashed, Smash. crashed, crashed. Smash. And you're like, okay, if I eat, if I have a treat, if I order DoorDash, this will stop. But it's like, no, no. You just have to get past it you have to get through it and yes it does take like some bravery and some like action on your part but you just have to get through it it's not you won't get stuck there unless you keep yourself stuck there yeah you by, gotta paddle you gotta paddle this through this should the shore <laughs> the shore break shouldn't be here it shouldn't be like this i I still believe that. But when we re- when we relate it to urges, it's like this shouldn't be here. This morning when I made a plan, I did not plan to want to eat three of the chalk zeros. I planned to eat one of them. So why am I here after I finished that first one and now I want three? This is not supposed to happen. This isn't part of me getting toward my goals. This isn't going to help. And we take it. We yep. take the er- the sim- the simple thought of eat more. Let's eat more. More will be better. That's that's all that's coming into our brain. I want more. That's the thought that comes in. And instead of being like, that's fine. We just planned for one. So we'll have another one tomorrow. Instead of answering your brain, instead you go, I'm so mad that I want this. This is so frustrating that this is still happening. This is I not thought, how it should go. Yes. And it's that arguing with reality. You're arguing with the fact that an urge does exist. And I, in those moments, I want you to take your power back and be like, that <laughs> food does not, not control, control me. me. Say it with us. Because <laughs> it well, doesn't. It's, some days the swells are bigger than others. Exactly. You have to be able to move with it and you need to be able to adapt. And and you know what? I'm really, really grateful that I don't experience urges like I did yesterday every single day. Yeah. And I'm not saying maybe that wasn't the case at some point. I'm not sure if maybe I just wasn't as aware of it. But yesterday was a doozy. That was pipeline, dude. It was. You are trying to paddle out a pipeline. Yeah. So... And then other times it's just going to be like this this light desire that's just like, oh, I just wish I could have one more. And you'll be able to just answer that and be like, it's it's not, it's nothing in the grand scheme of things. And I did have a slight, I, I really am dealing with like not eating outside of those meals and like really limiting snacks. There are it's multiple reasons for that. It's a good challenge. But you asked me a good question yesterday. Now, I don't want a six pack, but you said what would six pack Maggie do? Like, would she, would she be doing that? And I feel like that's a good question, but as always, the question is like in the eye of the beholder, like, is it helpful for you or not? I was trying to help you. No, but it was helpful because I used it last night. It's just, we're trying to become a better version of ourselves and the version of yourself who's already done this, they do things differently. And I can tell you that because the version of me that was unhealthy, the version of me in 2015 all her habits, the way her days looked, the way she thought, what she did, how she felt, nothing like the way that I am now. It's, it, it, there's zero correlation. The the me, the choices I make now and what I do now are completely different. And so had I from that space been like, okay, the Maggie that has lost 50 pounds, the Maggie that has energy all day, the Maggie that doesn't yell at her kids <laughs> as much, the Maggie, <laughs> <laughs> the Maggie that makes healthy meals like what does she do what would she do 
and this is what we're going to be talking about in Vibe Club. It's like using, utilizing your future self. What would she do in this situation? Or asking yourself, would she do this? And so I found it to be very helpful last night. It, for me, as with all tools, uh, apply if it, if it works for you. For me, it was like, that's a really good question. And no, I don't think she would. I think she, I'm hoping that future Maggie has even less drama about food. And she would be like, give me a break. Like we eat two times a day. We have our coffee in the morning two times a day. We feel amazing. There's no need to snack at night. I don't like eating close to bedtime. Like I try to reach out to her and be like, what, what is she doing? And I found it to be really helpful. So there are all types of tools that you can use to bottom line show up in those moments answering your brain um, checking in with like okay so the me that has lost these last 15 pounds because that's who I'm that's who I'm trying to become right now and we're always trying to become a a different better version of ourselves hopefully especially if you're listening to this podcast Um, my future self from now is going to do things differently than I do them my guess is that she does not eat pork rinds and cream cheese Mm -hmm. at eight o'clock yeah you know that's my guess and it's not bad. It's just different. And when you do different things, you like your results are different in your life. And so what lost me the first 50, 25 pounds, then 40 pounds isn't going to lose me the last 15. And so I have to start getting a little bit creative and just be like, okay, what do we need to tweak? And then so for me, that that did end up being very helpful last night being like, okay, so the me who has lost this last weight, the last 15 pounds, like, is she eating another snack or not? Be- yeah. Right before I asked you those questions, I was listening to Atomic Habits and he's talking about um, identity habits. Okay. This is exactly what it is. Okay. It's like um, asking yourself who you want to become. Yeah. It's, I, I'm not someone who kicks a ball. I'm a soccer player. Mm-hmm. It's not, um, you know, apply it. Apply so it's it not anything. even the habit. It's the identity. It's who you become from the habit. Yes. Right. It's like, I don't want to run a 5K. I want to become a runner. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So I'll have to convert that into what, because obviously your identity is built on your habits, but at a certain point you can't just, you're, you're playing small when you're identifying with the habit rather than identifying with who you will become exactly. from implementing and establishing those, those habits. Yeah. So I'm thinking of like, all right, who, what's my identity? Oh. I'm somebody who is satisfied with my waistline i guess i don't know i'm still trying to figure it out i guess so would you consider yourself to be fit right now uh i'm not not fit (laughs) you're like like still on your way to being fit you you don't like look at yourself in the mirror and be like i'm fit but you're not like out of shape no but you're not at that place yet I guess I don't, I'm somewhere in between. It's kind of weird. It's a decision, really. It's, <laughs> like yeah. someone could decide they could have lost 300 pounds and now they're your weight and they're like, I am fit. Yeah. I, yeah. So, but you're not exactly where you want to be. Right. So, yeah. Food for thought. Um, it's definitely a time to be uh, taking a look at your habits and, and all of that. And, it, and right now it's a good time because of the energy. Yeah. Develop Utilize good it. habits during this time so that when it's March, April, May, June... And it's the energy is different. You have good habits in place. Yes. Right. It's the most important habits. We were discussing this a little bit before the podcast, like habits are what create the results for you, you know, so make sure whatever goals you've set for this year that, you know, the type of habits that that person who already has that result, what habits do they have? What do they do? And I remember hearing this from, from Tony Robbins back in 2012 and just what that person does is different. Someone who is successful has completely different habits than someone who is unsuccessful. Hundred mm-hmm. You cannot neglect that. So it's time to take a look at really relating when you go to that future self version of you who has these things that you want. What does her day look like? What does she do when she wakes up? What are some things that she never misses doing every single day? And that's going to look different for everybody, but for you, connect with what that looks like for you. How, how, what are the habits that you're currently practicing? Because remember, anything you're doing every single day is a habit. So you may have not, you may have not created on purpose the habit of sleeping in, but it's one of your habits. If you sleep in, you are a person who sleeps in, you know, so you have habits 
uh, most of them are just subconsciously created. They aren't chosen on purpose. You have to you have to start deciding on purpose what positive and helpful habits you want to create. And until then, you just have the habits that you are used to to practicing, and they're just well established. So that's there is going to be a discomfort anytime you're doing something new or starting something new. Cool. So I think the rant turned into a full episode. We had something completely different written down. (laughs) Well, luckily there's just weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So what are we going to be talking about next week, Ryan? I don't know. I have no idea. We're going to talk about the scale next week. Okay. It's been about a year since I've talked about the scale. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably time to start talking about the same things. Yeah. Okay. All right. See you next week. See ya.